This is Rational Exponents Part 2. In this section, we're going to continue using the exponent laws. We're going to leave our answers in rational exponent form also. So, to do negative 27 a squared b cubed c to the negative 3 all raised to the 1 third, we are using the exponent law that says when you raise a power to a power, you're going to multiply the exponents. However, we have to deal with this coefficient. We have to raise negative 27 to the 1 third power also. So this is everything written out distributed, negative 27 in parentheses to the 1 third. Then multiply 2 times 1 third gives us 2 thirds, 3 times 1 third gives us 3 thirds, and then negative 3 times 1 third is negative 3 thirds, and we'll clean that up. Negative 27 to the 1 third, you can type that into the calculator as you see it. If your calculator won't do a negative raised to a fraction power, then you're going to have to realize that that is the same as the cube root of negative 27 and simplify it as a radical. a to the 2 thirds doesn't simplify. 3 over 3 gives me just b to the 1. Negative 3 over 3 gives me c to the negative 1. Recall that we can't have negative exponents, and if the negative exponent is in the denominator, we're going to send it up to the numerator. So this is our final answer. Another problem, I'm going to deal with the negative exponents a little differently from the beginning, and that is when I see a negative exponent in the numerator, I'm going to send it to the denominator and make it a positive exponent. If the negative exponent is in the denominator, I'm going to send it to the numerator and make it positive. So this is a to the 2 thirds, it was a positive exponent, leave it where it was. The b to the negative 1 half got sent to the denominator right there. The a to the negative 1 fourth, that was a negative exponent that was already in the denominator, so I sent it to the numerator. And b to the 2 thirds was a positive exponent, it just stayed where it was. Now we'll use our exponent laws. This is multiplying these. When you multiply those, you keep the base and add the exponents. So this will just be a to the 2 thirds plus 1 fourth. The denominator is the same situation. Keep the base, add the exponents. If you have a calculator that does the fractions, just type it in and you get the 11 twelfths here. You get the 7 6 here. However, if your calculator doesn't do the fractions, you have to go through the routine to get a common denominator. This would have to be multiplied by 4, so we would multiply by 4 on the top. This multiplied by 3 means we multiply by 3 on the top. That's how we get 8 and 3 to get the 11 twelfths. Same thing here. This would need to be multiplied by 3 on the top and bottom. That's how we get 3 here. Multiply by 2 top and bottom, which gives me 4. Add those up, gives you the 7, 6. And that is your simplified answer in rational exponent form. With this one, I'm going to do this two different ways for you. The first thing I'm going to do is distribute this negative one-third through this parenthesis on the top, which gives me x to the negative one-sixth because one-half times negative one-third is negative one-sixth. y to the negative one-third because this is y to the first. One times negative one-third is negative one-third. I did nothing to the denominator. Now I'm going to do just the plain old exponent law, which means deal with this. This is a matter of division, so we are going to keep the base and subtract the exponents. Negative one-sixth minus two-thirds is what I have right here. Over here, I'm going to have y to the negative one-third minus a negative one. Because that's what the operation says, but we're subtracting a negative one. Here's the arithmetic written out by hand if you have to do it by hand. Negative one-sixth minus two-thirds. You might want to change that to plus a negative. At the same time, I got a common denominator of six by multiplying top and bottom by two. So we get negative 4, 6, add this up as negative 5, 6. Here I would change this to plus, plus, get a common denominator of 3, negative 1 third plus 3 thirds is 2 thirds. So that's what we're going to have as our exponents on this right here. It's a negative exponent. The negative exponent here needs to be sent down to the denominator, and we have x to the 5, 6 on the bottom with a y to the 2 thirds on top. That's one way to deal with the negatives. Here's the second method. I'm still going to distribute this negative through the top. Same thing I had on the first step a minute ago. But now I'm going to do what I did previously, and that is when I see a negative exponent, I'm going to send it to the opposite place. So the numerator will be this y to the first because it got sent up. That was a negative exponent in the top, got sent to the bottom. A negative exponent in the top got sent to the bottom, and that positive exponent stayed. Now, I've got two different exponent laws to deal with here. This is a multiplying scenario, so that is keep the base and add the exponents. 
2 thirds plus 1 6. 2 thirds is the same as 4 over 6 because I could multiply top and bottom by 2 here. Add that up and gives me 5 6. This is a division situation, which is keep the base and subtract. 1 minus a third. Think of your 1 as 3 over 3 and subtract and get 2 thirds. So this is your power that's on the y. This is your power that's on the x. So we have y to the 2 thirds, x to the 5 6. So now the directions have changed. This says we're going to simplify the expression by first changing it into an equivalent expression with rational exponents, and then rewrite your answer in simplified radical form. This is the whole reason to do the rational exponents, and that is, if you look at this problem right here, the cube root of a times the square root of a, we can't do it. We can do the square root of something times the square root of something, or the cube root of something times the cube root of something, but when these two indices are not the same, we can't do the problem as a radical. But if we shift that into rational exponent form, we can use our exponent laws. This is a to the first, so this is a to the one third. This is, remember, square root of a, that's an index of two, so that's a to the one half. Exponent law says keep the base, add the exponents. Here's your arithmetic if you have to do this by hand with the common denominator, just gives us a to the five six. But the direction said puts your answer in simplified radical form, so I must shift back to the radical form. The 6 in the denominator becomes my index. The 5 of the numerator becomes the inside power. Same kind of problem. Let's get this rewritten as rational exponents. This is a to the 1 sixth times a to the 3 fourths. Exponent law says keep the base, add the exponents. Need a common denominator, which is 30. This would have been multiplied top and bottom by 5. That's how we get 5 thirtieths. This would be multiplied top and bottom by 6. That's where we get the 18 thirtieths. Add that up as our 23 thirtieths. Go back to radical form, and that's it. And this radical does not simplify, just like the last one didn't simplify, because the index is bigger than the inside power. This one, go to your rational exponent form. a to the 5 6 times a to the 2 thirds. Exponent law, keep the base, add the exponents. Now, Common denominator is 6. This gets to stay 5, 6. This would have needed to be multiplied by 2. That's my 4, 6. Add that up as 9, 6. But the fraction 9, 6 reduces to 3 halves. Then go to your radical form. That is the square root of a cubed. Remember, that is a denominator of 2 is your index, but the square root, we don't show the index. When you do the square root and you want to simplify that, you could write out your a's. You have a pair of a's, so that's an a that's going to come out with an A staying in. That is the simplified answer to that problem. New exponent law, but the same directions. We need to write each of these in rational exponent form. This is y to the 3 fourths, y to the 1 6. This exponent law says keep the base and subtract. Common denominator is twelfths. Multiply this top and bottom by 3, which makes 9 twelfths. Multiply this top and bottom by 2, makes 2 twelfths. Subtract gives you 7 twelfths. Go back to radical form. The index is bigger than the inside power, which says you're finished with the 12th root of y to the 7th. Now here's something that looks kind of strange. Square root of the cube root of y. Well, what we need to think about is what does this mean? The square root of means, in rational exponent form, something to the 1 half. Well, the something that's going to the 1 half is this. Well, how do we write this in rational exponent form? That is y to the 1 third. So writing that a little more neatly is y to the 1 third raised to the 1 half. We can use our exponent law that says keep the base and multiply these, which gives us y to the 1 sixth, which converts to radical form as the sixth root of y. Similar kind of problem. Take a look at the outside first. That's the cube root which means it's going to be something to the one-third. And the something is this part inside here, which is x to the three-fourths. So more neatly, we have x to the three-fourths raised to the one-third. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply. Those threes can cancel out. We just get x to the one-fourth, which is the fourth root of x.